Uh, good morning, everyone. I do wear two hats. If anyone would like to speak to me sometime this week about both, I'd be delighted. But today, in my little time, I'm going to talk about botanical gardens and using Edinburgh very much as an example of what I believe many botanical gardens around the world are doing in terms of education. So, a little bit of audience participation. Have you, I'm, I'm guessing most of you have all visited a botanical garden. How many of you have ever worked or, or now work at one? Hands up. Okay, a few, actually more than I thought, so that's good. So you, you'll have to bear with me, you guys, because you probably know a little bit about what I'm going to say. <laughs> but botanical gardens, I started off in commercial crop production, nursery ornamentals, then into horticultural education, teaching in a couple of colleges in the UK. And I have to say, I didn't really get what botanical gardens were. And I don't think that's because I was a bad student or didn't pay attention. It's just a little, in my view, a niche of horticulture that's Fantastic, but, but over there a bit. So for the rest of you, just a little stat, there's over 3,000 botanical gardens. They have many species of plants, they're conserving plants, but they do lots of horticulture, they do lots of beautiful gardens, and they do lots and lots of education. And you'll forgive the little advert for the place that, where I work now, the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh. We're one of the oldest botanical gardens in the world. Um, 17th century, been on our current site since the early 19th century, and we've got about 15,000 species, it's a big number, it's about 5% of the world flora, but we do lots of horticultural education, and in the last years we've expanded that. So, the School of Horticulture has been at the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh, I'm going to ask for anyone that's ever studied at the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh. There's a show of hands. Don't we have some hands in the audience? You got audience? drunk with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you got drunk with that guy. <laughs> I'm going to tweet that later. You got, you got drunk with George Anderson. So, George Anderson um, was actually the person who I, whose job I took, and he retired in 2004. So, I actually went initially to Edinburgh as the head of School of Horticulture. So, a tradition of over 100 years. They run their diploma in horticulture education, very, very similar to the, to the Q model. Um, and they've been using that initially to train horticulturalists and guests for the British Empire, then more traditionally botanic garden horticulturalists, but now horticulturists in its broadest sense. So we offer now, and we started up the degree programme, and, and I know Jeff's in the audience, I won't embarrass you too much, Jeff, but, but Jeff was one of the people that, that initially was part of that group that made the decision to, to if you like, to stop the diploma in horticulture education and go across again to a higher national diploma, which are foundation degrees, we call that in the UK. We've now developed that even further, and we have a four year in Scotland, a, a BSc honours is four years. We have a four year honours degree in horticultural and plantsmanship. It's, got, it's not a unique partnership, but it's an excellent partnership with what is now the Scottish Rural College and Glasgow University. And we very much made the decision that we want to get lots of dirty hands and practical skills. And certainly in, in my time in Edinburgh, um, we've, we've tried to do that. So we've now brought back in work experience. We take the students and make sure that they get dirty hands in, in all of our four gardens. Uh, they do individual plots. They do lots of practical experience in the gardens. We, very much we do that. And you know, that's what the students want. Every time we do a SWOC survey, student perception of course, it's the horticultural practical elements that they say were the most enjoyable and also the best learning they got from their programme with us at Edinburgh. So good learning. So that works and we've now got graduates that are all over the world. Now as well as that, Edinburgh has delivered practical horticultural training for adult learners, uh, tertiary education and also in capacity building projects around the world, again for probably 100 years. What we tried to do in 2006, what we set up, we thought we'd like to formalise this a bit. We had a look at what was on offer, and we set up our own CPA, Certificate of Practical Horticulture. It's not a unique name, it's probably not a unique idea, but within our little botanic garden sector, it appeared to be unique. Certainly, BGCI, the, the global organisation of botanic gardens, were excited, and in short, what we tried to do, and forgive me, I'm in Australia, so I shouldn't say forgive me for this, but I do a bit of scuba diving teaching, and so I didn't pitch the idea, Paddy, if you ever watch this, um, but it's a great idea, if any of you have done scuba diving, so in effect it's a practical subject taught by very enthusiastic people in a very nice place where you do lots of hands-on stuff. And that's the model we've tried to create with our programme. 
Um, as I say, it has been adopted, and we and I have been very fortunate to, to go and help and build capacity in a number of projects around the world over the last 10 years, and, and that's just four examples. So actually the course was actually written as part of a Darwin project in Istanbul. I spent two weeks in Istanbul going out to teach horticultural education, spent a week of that in an old shipping container, writing the first syllabus of the CPH. I could have been anywhere, but it's interesting. So, um, and we've used it in different worlds. The, the, the point is, it's the key practical skills, fun, exciting, but with some standardization of teaching and assessment. On the back of that, we suddenly realized that people quite like to do Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh badge programs. Um, so they're not all university badge, and, and people have, have queried that to me and said, Legal. You don't validate these, but you know our badge is actually a good badge, and, and I think the model of Q, the, the Q diploma badge that's been there for years, people want to do courses that, that's got credible places. They want to go to a nice place to do courses, and we've launched a number of programs in a, in a range of topics that I won't list here. We then realised that suddenly we've got more practically in our gardens. We've got more of a formal course that our horticulturists we're going to go and use in capacity building projects all over the planet to, 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 to raise the, the horticultural practical skills of people. We thought we really need to try and tackle the ability of our horticulturists to teach. So I think one of the, the key roles of me and, and my education team in Edinburgh is not to be the person who tries to teach everything. We've got almost 100 horticulturists and as many plant scientists to facilitate the students accessing those people and to make them better communicators was something that we've really tried to tackle. And the way we've done that is, again, we, we, we pinched the ideas from what was a City and Guilds basic teaching certificate and a, and a fantastic course I did years ago about instructional techniques run by the Agricultural Training Board. And we developed a very short four-day program that we've delivered in a number of places and we've taken CPA students and trained them up. But delightfully, the Royal Multicultural Society have now adopted that through their head of education, Sarah Cathcart, and they're now using that in their gardens to train their horticulturists. So we think that's pretty cool, if you forgive the word. Um, and we're keen to, to let other people use this. Um, the key thing about this, um, a little story. So when we first decided that we were going to upskill our horticulturists, we and I went to the local university, or one of them, matter which one, and then said, can you do a, train, a teacher training course for us? And they said, absolutely, they came in and, and ran a course for our horticulturists, at which point in my second year in Edinburgh I was nearly hung, because it was very much talk and sit and educational theory, and you can imagine for horticulturists, this was not the way to go. So I had a, my graph dropped at this point, and we needed to pick it back up again. But what we do now is we get people to do micro-teach sessions. From day one, Whoever's teaching it is doing role playing, making mistakes, getting people to critique their teaching, getting a relaxed atmosphere, and then a series of students doing micro teachings. One about their hobby, and then the next one we give them a topic that they're comfortable with horticulturally. And we find it successful. Um, we've also reinvented the term horticultural apprenticeships in Edinburgh. Um, and three years ago we restarted an apprenticeship program, and there are our first apprentices flanked on the left by our horticultural technician. Uh, we need to bring one of those back in, and also our horticultural supervisor, Tony Garns, who you may know Tony, who is the guy that's responsible for our apprenticeships. And the, the guy in the very middle, and it's purely by chance in the middle, Cameron, he was one of our first graduates, and he now works in the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh Tropical and that, that may not seem a big thing to you, but when we set the programme up, we wanted to give opportunities to young people, but we also wanted to try and develop our staff of the future, so already it's doing that for us. Um, online learning and technology is something that I could talk for way longer than 15 minutes on. I think technology, I believe it's really important, but people want to learn about horticulture and get dirt under the fingernails and they want to take cutting. So it's not the only answer. But when you've got great programs that you want people to access, I think the way forward is blended learning. And, and we've shown this now that if you run a course, there's a limit to how far people will travel to Edinburgh to do a course especially for a day a week course, how far will they come? But we've tried now some of our courses where we put them on as a two week block week, and we run that two week block one year, we run the same two week block of the same course. We've got people coming from Saudi Arabia, Canada, Norway, because they want to study in a nice place with nice people and get dirty hands. And so if you provide the way to do that, 
this is the model. So um, yes, we've created lots of content for this, we've made lots of films, and we're trying to get the content dynamics so that when people go away, they can do all the other stuff. But the key, we believe, is very much the blended learning, because they still want that contact, they still want to meet their colleagues, they still want to be the tutors. Um, so that's showing some success. Um, future ambitions. We've heard a lot already today, um, which has been very much about global challenges. I asked the question this morning in the plenary, what did, what did the speakers think about how botanic gardens could help? It was a bit of a leading question, because I have my own belief and passion for that. But they gave a good answer. I think botanic gardens do a lot, and I believe that we can do more, and, and many are doing so. So the whole concept of health, biodiversity, conservation, sustainability, um, we're tackling those issues in Edinburgh. One example will be our little edible garden project. The, the bottom left slide is there. We're just creating a whole space where people can come and do hands-on learning. The vision we've got is that when people come down to our garden, anyone that comes in has got the opportunity to sow a seed, take a cutting, engage some way. Um, a very knowledgeable person in the presentation I went to from a Canadian, in fact, no, I disrespect, it was the Chicago Botanic Garden in the US, said that carrots are the botanders of pandas of botanical gardens. Very good, and we need to connect people because people get excited about pandas. I know that. I have that to come. Um, I have time for this, but write that down. If you want to spend two and a half minutes on YouTube, please take a picture and watch that. It's the best little film I've ever seen, done by VGCI, on explaining how botanical gardens are engaging with communities and nature and, and going beyond their walls. It's fantastic. So please watch that. Um, and if you'd like to get in touch with me, it's nice to speak on the first day because you all know me, so I encourage you all to come and nudge me over coffee in these 3,000 people. Um, no apologies for putting a Twitter address up. We need to engage. I'd love to know what the average age of, of, of a delegate at this conference is. I say it needs to be lower. I'd have paid another five bucks. If we'd all pay another five bucks, we may have a few here. So um, that's me done. Thank you.